In my previous video, I said I wanted a different system of governance. I don't believe that the government, the two-party system, is the right system, and so I'm not voting. And, and, and you know, I'll, I've been criticised for that. And people will say, oh, it, it's ridiculous, we need to put people on the inside. And I likened it, you may remember, to the Titanic, a Titanic that is on a destination to hit an iceberg. And I was saying, it doesn't matter how, how, whether you change the captain, whether you change the crew, change the passengers, paint it a different colour, uh, put it into a different ocean. It don't make makes no difference. The dark forces, the Luciferians, the Freemasons, the Club of Rome, the Inter Bank of International Settlements, the One World Governments have already put the iceberg in there and it's going to crash and we'll all end up in the sea. And the lifeboats and the life belts will already be seized by the elites and you and I will have nothing. So I don't want to vote for that system. It's all fixed and if people can't see it then they really are short-sighted. So I wanted to have a different system and I mentioned in the previous video what that system might be. Much more at the local level, much more the people going to the meeting rooms, going to uh, the parks or the beaches or wherever, gathering and making their own decisions for their own environment. So what about much more on the national level then? What are we going to do about that? Surely we'll need some sort of executive, some sort of overriding thing. Okay, so I will agree that we do need some sort of national policy. So let's just start and, and I, I want to talk about this and, you, and of course I know people will criticise my ideas and, and that's fine. We can have a difference of opinion. That's what having an opinion is about, is that we can have a difference of opinion, we can share ideas. Instead of just going, no, that's crap, what a silly man, we can maybe look and say, well actually most of it I disagree with but I, I, I actually agree with that bit or I agree with that bit. And together we could formulate, I'm not trying to tell people what we should have, I'm just trying to put ideas of what we could have and with other people who are open to those we could come up with a solution that is a better system of governance than the crappy governance that we've got which is top down. I think the people are the ones that should be making the decisions. But on a national level, what do we do? Well, let's think about this. Firstly, I would say we are an island here. If you take Scotland, England, Wales, and if um, Northern Ireland and Ireland want to be part of it, then we are basically one island, we're two islands technically, but let's just say we're one island, we're close together, we've got the Isle of Wight, the Isle of Man, you know, the whole of this area. We are one island, we are surrounded by sea. We, in my mind, it, we, why do we need to compete with the rest of the world? Why? Why is there this whole sense that we've got to take part with the rest of the world, with other continents and other peoples whose ability to grow certain things are going to be better than us um, or not as good? Why should we? Can we not, firstly, from first principle, just say, let us be as self-sustainable as is physically possible? That's not to say that we can't order stuff in from around the world, like spices and things like we used to do in the old days and certain things perhaps uh, from areas where it is warmer than us um, or colder or whatever. That's not to say I'm saying absolutely do not um, get anything in, but let's make this country so that in any situation we can be upstanding and we can be self-supporting and self-sustaining. We subsistence, we can, we can survive on our own. I would like to see that as a sort of starting point to, to actually think about, rather than thinking on a global scale of everything. As I say, we can bring bits and bobs in, but let's make sure. So firstly, um, I would one of my main principles would be let's not um, build on farmland. We need to support farmers, and you'll know I talk about that quite a bit on the channel as it is. So that's number one. But on a national level, firstly, the first thing I would do would be to scrap legislation. I would scrap it immediately, get rid of it. I don't think that we need however many millions of lines of legislation because nobody knows, nobody can hold that in their mind. I mean, you see the lawyers with all their books and they go, oh, hang on a minute, I need to look that up. Well, if you don't know what's right and wrong, 
in your head there and then. You don't need a library of books to go and look it all up and go, oh yes, well there was this principle and this, that and the other and this was made case law and this, that and the other. I mean, ultimately it comes down to do no harm, cause no loss, cause no injury. And, and ultimately if you have that as your principal basis, what, what more do you actually need? So I would scrap legislation. You know, people will be going, oh my God, what, but what, what does that mean? You'll have anarchy. People will be doing all sorts of things, you know, this uh, wrong version of anarchy. They'll think that people will start marauding and smashing people's houses and going in and stealing stuff and people won't go to work or they'll be speeding on the roads. And, and I disagree. I think that ultimately people will get along because it's better for them to get along than not get along. Oh, but then it means uh, some people will break the law. But yes, some people break the law anyway. It doesn't matter what legislation you put down. People, you say people in a 70 mile an hour area, people on the motorway still go at 80 and 90. I mean, I see them, they go vroom, vroom. And it's not just um, rogue people that do that. Your so-called elite, upstanding, ordinary, everyday people are doing that. And ultimately, what does it matter? If you've not caused anybody any injury, if you've not caused anybody any loss or caused any harm, what real difference does it matter? If you crash and you're driving too fast, then um, yes, of course, then you, there needs to be um, a, an answer to that, of course. But if, if you're driving and the road is empty and there's nobody there, what difference does it make? So I would strip the roads from all these entrapment cameras, all this legislation, all this policy nonsense, all this trying to earn a lot of money from people and keeping them penalised. I would get shot of all of that. The legislation, I think, is a complete waste of time, which would be quite good. So I would I would uh, get rid of that. The police, of course, we've seen um, that people like Rob the Rat Catcher have been trying to um, instigate a whole new peace officers. Now, I think that is in and of itself the best thing. We need to retrain. I would get, I, I mean, I would make all the policemen redundant and offer them the chance to come back, but they would have to swear their oath. They would become peace officers. We would get rid of the, the corruption in the police and they are there to keep the peace. Back in, in like the Dixon of Doc Green days, they would stand and represent something instead of being a military force, as they seem to be trying to, uh, um, uh, and being corrupt, trying to, uh, to, to act big as if they're some sort of, I don't know, militia or army or whatever. They should be on the people's side, not against the people, trying to, again, uh, help people rather than extract money and enforce policies. I mean, these policies would have gone because I would have got rid of the legislation. I don't think we need it. I don't think that uh, in this day and age. Uh, I think what we could do is instead of penalising people all the time and assuming that people are guilty, which is what we've done, we've turned it around, we go back to the system of assuming people are innocent. Give people incentives to be good, kind and um, upstanding members of the of, of the citizens, citizens using these these legalese words, which I hate, of course, but we've got so used to common parlance now that we have to use them. But make people members of the pub, members of the public, you know, I'm still using it, but make the public, uh, give them incentives so that they they don't want to do wrong. They don't want to do harm. Make Make things easier for people. If you make things easier for people to do the things they actually want, as long as they're not harming, injuring or, or causing any loss, then you don't need the penal system. You don't need the carrot, the, the stick all the time. Just give people the carrot, incentivize people to get involved in their local, uh, their local lawmaking, as it were, or their local things that, that they need to do, rather than um, making these, uh, these policies that are completely against people and, and making them need to break the law or feel they've got to break the law. I think, you know, it's all about education. So talking of education, I would get rid of, um, I would make schools voluntary, totally voluntary. Now, of course, going to school is voluntary, but most people feel that they have to take their kids to school. Of course, I think the education in the system in the schools, uh, we would, in, in my mind, 
not only would it be educational, but you wouldn't have to have strangers and go on these, these dreadful curriculum and have a national curriculum. I think, again, that the local people should be deciding what they treat, uh, teach the children, what children need to learn. Certainly, the skills of life are those things that you would uh, teach children. Why can't children, instead of having to sit in classrooms of their, of their peers and be dictated to by some teacher, especially now teaching them these dreadful um, rubbish about gender identity and how to masturbate and all of this in, in so many lessons and teaching them rubbish, I think kids should be um, being able to go out and work if they want to earn some pennies. They should be able to do apprenticeships to learn skills that they can do with their hands, which, whatever they want to do, whatever they want to do. And we guide children to be able to grow up and be, again, do no harm, do, cause no loss, cause no injury, and get involved in things, debate with people in society, in the locality so that they become upstanding members of society, that they I can see where they can contribute. Children are very inventive. Children are very imaginative. They have skills that as you grow up, you lose that sense of childness, of having fun. Life should be about having fun. It's not about, oh, this sort of drab, got to go to work, got to earn a living, got to be serious. Let's let the children show us and demonstrate how we can have fun, how we can laugh. That to me is, is absolutely essential. Of course, we would need some sort of national policies about protecting our borders and having an army. Um, and again, maybe like we used to do in the old days, maybe it would be necessary to those that want to, those that feel that they have a niche to, to um, protect society. And I think once you've got a great society, once you've got something that you're proud of, once you've got something that you feel is important and, and uh, is doing something and is a beneficial, you don't want to lose it to complete marauding strangers coming in who want to take it from you. So maybe like in the old days when you had um, people spending an hour on a Sunday at the butts with their arrows, practicing, maybe you do have some form of, but not national service in the way that Rishi Sunak wants to have it, but maybe you encourage people to get fit and healthy and, and, and have some sort of militia if they want to. You see how a, young, a lot of young people want to be in different things like the Marines and things, and you've got these, um, these sort of, I don't know what you call them now, but these little training groups, you know, that, that go around or that little uh, meet in village halls and things. Yeah, for those that want to do all of that, like the reservists and things like that, those that I think that if you give people something they want to be proud of, if you give something they want to protect and look after, people will naturally, the young who are of that in inclination will want to be uh, there to help protect the elders and keep the society and what have you that we want. We have got to a point now where who cares about this society? Who cares about England or Scotland or Wales, really? You know, who who is there patriotic? Who wants to fight for king and country? I can't think of anybody who would want to fight for this king, uh, for this government uh, and and the, the rules of law and all this nonsense that we've got at the moment. I don't think people want that anymore because it's the customs and the traditions and the, um, the the things that you would have have been so obliterated recently by the government by by the two-party system that I want to see gone um, that nobody would want to fight for it but give the people something that is that they thrive and they're enjoying they can go to the pub and they can have a sing song uh, they're not being penalized they're working in in jobs and things where they do things with their hands there's a sense of pride there's a sense of purpose that people are cohesive they're working together they can see that they're they're a part of a community that they're important they're needed respected then of course they're going to fight and look after their and protect their communities and get on. Um, so I think it's very possible that we can come up with national ideas um, that will that people will will resonate with them if again we start very much with the people flowering 
flowering the ideas themselves and trying things out without being slapped down, without being told you can't do that, you can't build that there, you mustn't go on that bit of thing, keep off the grass. Start with the, the, the people and we can build this up. And I think that's then how you develop some, um, a, a, some basic national policies that people will actually respect and understand and support.